So we're looking at our third nine weeks benchmark reviewed Jeopardy game. And we're going to start with properties for 200, Alex. Bob bought five bags of apples that weighed three pounds each. The apples were priced at 175 per pound. The expression below represents the total cost of the bags of apples Bob bought in dollars. Parentheses three times 1.75 parentheses times five. Which expression below is also equivalent to the total cost of the apples? This says three plus five times 1.75. If this were a multiply, that would be true. You can't change multiply to add there in that situation in the manner that they've done that. So that will not work. Here, they've added 1.75 and 3. And again, if you are supposed to be multiplying those two, that's not going to give you the same result. Um, so this will not work for that reason. Here they've got 3 times 5, and then they've added um, 1.75. Again, you can't change multiply to add like that. Um, here they've got 3 times parentheses 1.75 times 5. If you look, this is 3 and 3, and 1.75 and 1.75 and 5 and 5. It's got it all in the same order, and it's all multiply still. The only thing that's changed is where the location of the parentheses are which numbers are being associated together, the correct answer here is D by the associative property of multiplication. So let's go to 400. Which equation illustrates the identity property of addition? All right, identity means you're going to get the same thing after you add something for addition. So what do you add and still get the same answer? That would be zero. So we're looking for something. We added zero to it, and we got the same thing, identity. Okay, here, y divided by 2 times 4 divided by 4 plus 4 is equal to y divided by 2 plus 4. This right here is the identity property of multiplication, not what we're looking for. 3y plus 2 minus 2 equals 3y plus 0. This would be a really tempting choice. If it had said 3y plus 0 is equal to 3y, that I would say is the identity property of addition, but not the way that they've used this here. All right, 4x plus 5 plus 0 is equal to 4x plus 5. Yes, that's the identity property of addition. 5y times 2 plus 1 half times 2. Right here, this is the inverse, multiplicative inverse here. So this is not what we're looking for here. Not with multiplying the inverses. So c is the only answer choice that makes the best sense here. So properties for 600. Barbara simplified an expression using the following steps. And which property justifies step 3? So look at step 3. 6y plus 12y is equal, or excuse me, plus 6. Now let's look above it. We had 6y plus 6 plus 12y. So it looks like we've moved this over here. And we've moved this over here. And the property that tells us we can add in any order would be the commutative property. And properties for 800. Which of the following equations is an example of the distributive property? Well, that would be A times B is AB. And A times C is also AC. So A does show the distributive property. B showing the groupings changed. This is associative property. Again, this is associative property. B is associative property of multiplication. C is associative property of addition, changing the group that 
is adding. And then this looks really tempting right here because they you would typically distribute that R. However, if you look, what changed is from S to T and the T to S. So that's actually a commutative property of addition that they're showing in this particular one. So that's not it either. A is the correct answer choice here. For a thousand, please. Properties. What is the name of the property illustrated below? Now looking from here to here, what has changed? We had four parentheses x plus two equals x plus two parentheses four. So the location of the four outside the parentheses is what has changed. So we know that's going to be a commutative property. Did not, oops, did not change the order in which those numbers, or excuse me, we did not change who was associating there. I'll get it right. Now, between the 4 and the x, or excuse me, the 4 in the parentheses and the 4 in the parentheses here, that is the operation of multiply. So commutative property of multiplication, not the commutative property of addition there. All right, we finished the properties category. Let's go to writing expressions. A coat on sale is, is on sale for 25% off the regular price. Write an expression to represent D, the price of the coat after the discount. So if you multiply this that expression will tell you how much is off. How much money is off the price of the coat. So if out of 100% we have this much off, how much percent do we have that we're still paying for? So if you need to, 100% minus the 25%, that's 75%. So what we can actually do here is say 75% in decimal form times the cost of the coat will tell you how much we're paying for it still. How much we're still paying for. Let's go to writing expressions for 400. James sold calendars for three weeks. Let Y represent the number of calendars he sold the first week. So if the first week is Y. He sold twice the number of calendars the second week as he did the first week. So the second week is twice that, that would be two times y. In the third week, James sold five less than. That means he's going to subtract five. The number he sold the first week. In the first week he sold y, so y comes there. Write an expression to represent the total number, total number of calendars James sold in the three weeks. So take the y from the first week. Total means add. Add the 2y from the second week. Add the y plus 5, or excuse me, y minus 5 from the third week. And if you look at that, we have like terms here. Same exact variable, so that means y plus 2y is 3y, and 3y plus y, still the like terms, that's 4y minus 5 is the expression we need there. And writing expressions for six. Brenda bought in concert tickets for 25 each. 
Nick bought M concerts for 25 each. Write an expression that can be used to find the total amount that Brenda and Nick spent for the concert tickets. So if Brenda bought N for 25 each, that would be 25 N. Nick bought N concerts for 25 each. So here's Nick. Total amount means we add them. So you could do it that way. Another way you could do it Okay, take out that common factor and put it outside parentheses using your distributive property. So that's an option. All right, for 800 writing expressions. Alexander drove 60 miles per hour for six hours. The next day he drove 50 miles, 55 miles per hour for H hours. Write an expression that can be used to find the total distance Alexander drove. Again, we've got that word total. So 60 times 6 will tell us this part right here, this sentence. Next day he drove 55 miles per hour for H hours. So 55 H. Total means we're going to add those. That's all we got for that one. All right, and writing expressions for a thousand. Chris earned seven dollars per hour plus thirty percent commission on all his sales at the shoe store. If C represents his sales for one day, write an expression that represents his total earnings for a day when he works eight hours. So here, seven dollars per hour if he works eight hours. That would be seven times eight plus. Plus 30% commission on all his sales at the store if C represents his sales for that day. So take this 30%, make it into a decimal. You could use 0 0.30 or 0 0.3, whichever one you like. Multiply it by C. You add those together because of the plus and the total and that will tell you how much he's earned for that day so this is the expression we would use all right and that's all we have for the properties and writing expressions categories please stay tuned for the rest of them